50% of these revenues to the European Peace Facility on the top of the 5 billion, not on substitution of, but adding to these 5 billion the revenues generated by these frozen assets in order to increase the military support to Ukraine. We do that through the European Peace Facility because the European Union budget cannot use its resources to buy arms. The European Peace Facility, as an intergovernmental fund, can do it. And the rest, the 10 percent, would be allocated to the Union budget to address reconstruction needs and to support and increase the Ukrainian defense industry capacities. We think that the revenue generated from these immobilized assets will be around three billion a year that will be added, as I said, to the European Peace Facility and to the European Union budget for military and civilian purposes. This proposal, this Council decision proposal, and this Council regulation from me and the Commission have already been sent to the Member States, my dear Prime Minister. So now it's up to them to take a decision that was very well received on the last Foreign Affairs Council. I hope that we can reach an agreement soon and change banknotes into weapons, because your soldiers don't fight with banknotes. They need physical arms. They need physical instruments in order to defend your people. That I'm saying that this week is very important from the point of view of our military support, and is also an important discussion of this week on Ukraine's future membership of the European Union. You have made the choice of becoming member of the European Union. We open this process. I understand those feeling well. When I was a young Spaniard facing the darkness of the dictatorship, it was for me the beacon of political freedom, economic prosperity, and social cohesion. These three things are the ones that any society would like to have political freedom, economic prosperity, and social cohesion. And today, the meeting we have uh, we has allowed us to review the Ukrainian efforts on the European path. We look at everything that has been done in terms of political association, reforms, and trade relations. I am happy to confirm, and the Commissioner Varelli will give more details, that Ukraine made remarkable progress. And this progress has been achieved while you are fighting for your national survival. So you fight two fights at the same time, on the military side, fighting for your survival as a nation and the reforms in order to make you a member of the European Union. Today, we have also made the first payment of 4.5 billion on the Ukraine facility, our 50 billion package to support the recovery, the reconstruction and modernization of Ukraine. And tomorrow, the European Council will discuss how to further speed up Ukraine's accession. Let me once again reiterate that we Europeans know that we owe to your fight. We will be for you, for your side, committed to whatever it takes. And thank you very much for this very much important exchange today. Thank you. Thank you. Premier Budlaska, it's your turn now. Dear High Representative of the European Union, Dear Joseph, Mr. Commissioner, dear Oliver, dear colleagues, journalists, it is a great pleasure to be here today in Brussels among Ukraine's friends and partners. We are grateful for the political, military, financial and humanitarian support. And we are particularly grateful for the acceleration of our European integration. We are grateful for the approval of the Ukraine facility mechanism for Ukraine. It will provide 50 billion euros in assistance over four years. It will be one of the key factors in our stability, and it is already working. Our second key priority is long-term sustainable and predictable military support from the EU. I fully agree with Mr. Joseph Borrell words that EU is now on high alert as the vital interests of the entire continent are at stake. That is why Ukraine expects rapid progress in defense relations. 
In particular, we expect the newly established Ukraine Assistance Fund under the European Peace Facility, EPF, to be effective. This instrument will allow to increase the military support by an additional 5 billion euros this year. Thank you so much for this. We also welcome the first European Defence Industrial Strategy presented on 5th March, which includes Ukraine. It's crucially important for us. We are interested in participating in its practical implementation as soon as possible. After all, the Ukrainian defence industry will make Europe stronger to face common security challenges. The operating of the Defence Innovation Office in Kyiv will also contribute to this. We are grateful to the EU for its consens consistency in implementing sanctions against Russia and for the 13th sanctions package adopted in February. We expect the pressure on Russia to increase as part of the next 40, uh, 14th package. It is important to book the metallurgical, financial and energy sectors of the aggressor economy, including nuclear industry and enterprises of Rosatom. We also need quick decisions on the confiscation of Russian assets. We need to use profits from these assets for uh, recovery and also for buying of weaponry and ammunition, as Mr. High Representative uh, notes, and to cover budgetary needs. But that is only the first step. We insist on the full confiscation of other or other use of all frozen assets, I mean body of frozen Russian assets. Europe and the world need an effective precedent for making the aggressor pay a heavy price for the destruction it has caused in Ukraine. Dear colleagues, today's meeting of the Association Council is the second since the Ukraine was granted candidate status for EU membership and the first following the European Council's historic decision to open accession negotiations. We are grateful to our European partners for the agreement to continue the autonomous trade liberalization measures. It is extremely important for the Ukrainian economy that the so-called economic visa-free regime would be extended. At the same time, we seek long-term agreements on further trade liberalization, including through the mechanism provided Article 29 of the Association Agreement. Ukraine is ready to take further coordinated steps with its neighbors and the European Commission to unblock the border and restore exports and transit of Ukrainian goods. First of all, agricultural products. We are also working productively to bring the start of negotiations on the ACA agreement closer. This is the so-called industrial visa-free regime. This is a very important step in our strategic partnership. We look forward to further political support for EU-Ukraine relations in the area of critical raw materials and our participation in EU industrial alliances. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank Jose Borrell, Oliver Varhe, all partners and friends for today's productive meeting of the EU-Ukraine Association Council. We have, we have seen that there is no alternative to the path of EU accession and that it is irreversible. And this is a matter of the near future, not of distant prospects. We need each other today, tomorrow and always. Unity is our strength, our truth, our common values and our better future for, generation, for generations to come. Thank you so much, dear High Representative, dear Commissioner. Thank you so much, dear colleagues, journalists. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Commissioner, now it's your turn. Thank you very much. I want to first of all welcome Prime Minister Shmihal. Uh, and um, I uh, start by saying that uh, of course, the European Commission continues to 
stand by Ukraine and uh, the people of Ukraine in defending their country. Therefore, in this fight, as long as it takes, the Commission will continue to support with all our means uh, the Ukrainian state to function and to run and perform the public services uh, under this huge pressure of war of aggression uh, is causing. We're continuously in contact in many different fora with the Ukrainian counterparts. Today, in the Association Council, we conveyed uh, our unwavering support to the Prime Minister and his team. And also, uh, we took stock of the um, ongoing uh, support Ukraine is receiving from us. When it comes to our financial support, we noted that since the start of uh, the Russian aggression against Ukraine, the EU, the member states, and the European financial institutions have all together made available 98 billion euros uh, to Ukraine and to its people. This includes humanitarian, economic, military support and uh, funding uh, made, avail made available also to host Ukrainian refugees in Europe. This support also includes the first ever payment uh, worth of uh, four and a half billion euros under the newly established uh, Ukraine facility. This payment was uh, quick and timely as we have promised and necessary. Uh, therefore, we worked under huge time pressure, but we have delivered. We would also expect the next payment uh, to come in April uh, already, uh, subject to progress on policy conditions as they were agreed between the Commission and uh, Ukraine previously. I also want to recall that the Ukraine facility of uh, 50 billion euros of support is there also uh, for the next four years. This is to support the recovery and reconstruction and modernization of Ukraine as well. And this should create predictable, reliable financing for the next four years. The facility will cater both for short-term state needs and recovery requests and medium-term reconstruction and modernization of uh, the, Ukraine, uh, the Ukraine reconstruction work. And this should also help the private sector uh, to participate in the reconstruction and recovery exercise and should also bring further uh, the reforms necessary for EU accession. We welcome uh, that Ukraine has approved its plan now ahead of the Association Council. I understand that the Prime Minister has another meeting to hand over this plan uh, to our President. Uh, this has been uh, common efforts, uh, working together with uh, the administration in Kiev. And I think uh, that this plan uh, should be the main tool for the implementation of the Ukraine facility. And this plan should also be a comprehensive plan of the, uh, of the whole country uh, for the internal reforms and investment priorities. And uh, it should be also ready to be presented to the donors, the international partners, so that they can also uh, come forward with their contributions. The Commission will now assess this plan and uh, will make proposal for a Council implementing decision outlining the reforms and uh, investments for the next four years. Once the Council approves this decision, uh, we will start the disbursements uh, on a quarterly basis, uh, subject to uh, qualitative and quantitative steps uh, that have to be made by Ukraine. Now, this is the first EU-Ukraine Association Council since uh, the European Council took the decision to open accession negotiations with Ukraine. We're pleased that this decision has uh, contributed to maintaining a positive momentum in the country for advancing reforms, despite uh, the ongoing war. It is important that Ukraine build on this positive momentum, uh, as enlargement will remain a merit-based process. In particular, I want to uh, emphasize the continued importance of the judicial and anti-corruption reforms. Today, we took note of the work on uh, the four remaining reform steps that are necessary for the adoption of the negotiating framework. And 
on which we, on the basis of which the European Council took its decision to start uh, the accession negotiations back in December. We recalled that the Commission will continue to monitor uh, the implementation of all these steps, and this includes uh, advancing the rights of persons belonging, on nation, belonging to national minorities, where we emphasize the need to closely engage with minorities and their kin states. We also encourage Ukraine to work hard towards completion of uh, the other uh, recommendations that we have made to each chapter back in our enlargement report of last year. And we will assess this as part of our regular reporting exercise on enlargement progress uh, later on this year. Uh, we also record uh, for the Ukrainian colleagues that uh, the Commission has tabled the draft negotiating framework for uh, discussions in the Council, uh, which is now to be agreed uh, by the Council um, once the internal deliberations um, have been successful. We also discussed the state of play of implementation of commitments under the Association Agreement, and uh, we also uh, underlined the importance of taking full advantage of the possibilities under the Deep and Comprehensive Free Trade Area. Uh, there is still potential uh, that we have not uh, used. Uh, there are very many promising areas, um, and we are already working in areas like the roaming area, um, the ACA, the Agreement on Conformity Assessment and Acceptance, uh, as mentioned by uh, the Prime Minister, but also uh, we have touched upon the energy sector. So, in conclusion, I think it's safe to say that what we see is a stronger and more resilient uh, Ukraine, uh, despite all the efforts of the Russian aggressors. And it is also very clear that Ukraine uh, will come closer and closer to the European Union. Thank you. Thank you. Now we take a few questions. Uh, first one, Dmitro. Tak už majemo ukrajinský preklady, možno zapýtať in ukrajinský. So we have Ukrainian translation as well, so if you want, you can ask in Ukrainian. Uh, thank you for your follow-up, Mitros Kruko, National News Agency of Ukraine. As I was preparing, asking in English, I'll be asking in English. Thank you. For uh, high representative, if I may, uh, as we speak, uh, there are two, at least, uh, uh, trans-border points blocked uh, by Polish. Are you repeating? I don't understand. Border crossing. There is a, no, as we no speak, we have two border crossing points blocked now in Poland. As Prime Minister mentioned, you discussed shortly that issue, but right now that uh, uh, event uh, just developing, because uh, we have also attempted to block uh, the border uh, uh, with, between Poland and Germany. So that do you see some problems in that, and what is uh, the possible threat uh, for um, European mobility, and in particular military mobility, in that uh, regard, especially in the view of uh, hybrid threats from Russian side? Uh, for Prime Minister, if I may, you mentioned the importance of uh, the autonomous measures uh, which are introduced by uh, European Union. Uh, but there are some limitations in the trade, and we expect that uh, Ukraine will not ge uh, get some kind of one billion or more uh, of revenues because of limita that limitations. Are you going to diversify uh, the trade flow uh, in that regard? I mean, to maybe to find in other markets. And to Commissioner Bargeli, if I may. Uh, uh, with all the uh, issues related to enlargement, do you expect uh, the first uh, inter intergovernmental uh, conference could be held before uh, the uh, European elections? Thank you so much. Well, um, about the blocking of the border, yes, we are aware of that. Uh, we are following uh, closely this event. Certainly, the border has to be deblocked. Whatever reason they can argue, this has to be solved by other means. Because from a military point of view, we need to have the transit between Ukraine and the rest of the European, and the European Union free for military, for civilian purposes. So I understand there may be concerns, but the way of solving that is certainly not uh, jeopardizing the transit between Ukraine and Poland in this critical moment. 
Thank you so much. So I will continue uh, the answer of uh, High Representative. We work hard on the basis of coordination platform here in European Commission. We work hard with our neighbor countries, and I believe that nearest time we will have good results. Uh, the most important things which, which we discussed today during Association Council is uh, impossibility of blocking of the uh, solidarity lanes through the European Union, uh, including our border points, uh, border control points, because it's first point for beginning of uh, solidarity lanes, and it couldn't be blocked. We have no one officially recognized uh, case when uh, weaponry, weaponry supplying or humanitarian support supplying were blocked. So it was no one times, so uh, it go uh, free through our, through our border. Uh, we also uh, have very good decision uh, yesterday's, uh, tonight, uh, I would say tonight's trialogue discussion, uh, when uh, continuation of autonomous trading measures uh, is approved uh, by uh, representatives of European Council and European Parliament for one year more since 25th of uh, June uh, for the one year and uh, there is uh, good, uh, good for us uh, conditions uh, when we will take 22nd, 23rd year for uh, estimation of level of supplying of our uh, good from Ukraine to European Union. Uh, there are some uh, safeguards which could be implemented, but uh, it will not work while Ukraine will not reach some volume of uh, this uh, 22nd, 23rd year. So, in general, these conditions are negotiated with Ukraine, are approved by Ukraine, and uh, I believe that it will be approved by uh, European Council, and we will have this uh, in practice uh, for the next year. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, well, when to have the first IGC, first you have to have um, a negotiating framework adopted. That is the moment from when some can uh, see also the timeline for the first IGC. Uh, as you have seen, we made a proposal uh, to the Council uh, on the negotiating framework. Once the Council adopted, I think uh, we can see when uh, the first IGC would be convened by the Council. Thank you very much. And since Prime Minister has to go to the Commission, we have to leave it here. We had three questions already, so thank you very much uh, for coming. Uh, Prime, Minister has to, Prime Minister has to leave, High President. And, okay, so let's take one question quickly. Philippe. Vous pouvez en français, mais très rapidement, vous plaît. Thank you, uh, Philippe René, Journal Le Soir. So, a quick question. It seems that the Commission has some ideas <coughs> in order to conduct the enlargement process with uh, Ukraine. Uh, would you Please uh, elaborate a bit on this. Uh, it's uh, the question of the so-called step-by-step enlargement. Thank you. Well, the college meeting is ongoing as we speak, and the proposal is discussed there. So I suggest you address this question at the midday uh, to the colleagues who are going to deep brief the press. Uh, if, if what you are pointing at is the gradual integration, uh, this is nothing new. Huh? Uh, this is, uh, I already quoted, we're doing the roaming, we're doing uh, the ACA uh, with Ukraine, uh, we're doing the same under the growth plan uh, with the Western Balkans. Uh, this commission has put this uh, very early on with the introduction of the new methodology, enlarging methodology, the possibility of integrating the candidate countries early on into the single market in areas where they are ready and able uh, to apply the rules that we are doing. Thanks. And with this, we really have to finish. So thank you very much. See you soon. Do povacenia. Thank you. Prime Minister Schmihal, dear Dennis, it is my great pleasure to welcome you here today again. We're making two important, achieve, marking two important achievements. The first is the reason for your visit to the Commission. 
you are delivering the Ukraine plan. And this indeed is a pivotal moment in our cooperation. Your success in delivering the plan today is all the more impressive since it is only 19 days that the Ukraine facility entered into force. The plan maps out how Ukraine can get back to rapid growth and start to recover the losses that the war has caused. Moreover, it is based on the same approach we have developed within the European Union. In other words, it combines reforms and investments, and this will boost, boost growth and at the same time help Ukraine move closer to our union. The dedication and the commitment of the Ukrainian government is truly remarkable, especially as you are still facing a brutal Russian war of aggression. Your teams worked closely with the Commission and drew on the significant expertise of the World Bank, the IMF and the G7. We have discussed this plan many times as it was being developed. It will now be assessed carefully by my services, but I'm very confident that it will soon, we will soon be able to make a positive recommendation to the Council to endorse the plan. The 50 billion euro facility, Ukraine facility, underpinned by the plan is by far the largest support program for Ukraine. It is three times bigger than the IMF program, for example, and the multi-donor coordination platform that we have built played a very useful role in its elaboration. And the plan will form a key reference point for other donors as they develop their own support programs. All this is crucial for Ukraine to ensure the coherence of all support efforts. The second reason for our meeting today is that the Commission has just paid to Ukraine a first tranche of 4.5 billion euros from the facility. It's the very first time that there is a disbursement now. This payment is um, in form of a bridge financing. It is crucial to help you maintain the functioning of the state in this very difficult moment. In April, once Ukraine fulfills the condition we agreed upon, we will make a second disbursement um, of the bridge financing of 1.5 billion euros. So, today is a good day for Ukraine. Funds are flowing to meet urgent needs, and the country has laid a solid foundation for the EU's support right up until the end of 2027. Dear Madam President, dear Ursula, Dear friends, journalists, I am pleased to be here today and at the heart of United Europe where crucial decisions for our common future are being taken. Ukraine and the European Union have never been more united in our values, aspirations and hopes. In more than two years since the Russian invasion, we have received a total of 88 billion euros in aid from the EU and its member states. About half of this has been financial budget and humanitarian support. These funds have ensured our macro-financial stability and internal resilience and provided resources to cover the most urgent budget expenditures as well as support for millions of our citizens. Ukraine will always remember and appreciate this. In 2024, we took another step forward with the personal support of President Ursula von der Leyen. The European Union launched a fundamentally new support mechanism for Ukraine, the Ukraine Facility Program. It is, its aim is to make assistance stable and predictable, to align in clearly with Ukraine's reform and to bring our country closer to EU membership. We are taking about 50 billion euros over four years. Of this, 38.3 billion will be direct budget support. 7 billion will be used to stimulate investment in the Ukrainian economy. Uh, this will potentially attract more than 30 billion euros of investment over the life of the program. Further, 
1.7 billion euros will be used to implement reforms and build the capacity of public authorities. Ukraine is grateful for this instrument, which will be one of the pillars of our strengths. From our side, we have also done a lot of work to prepare the plan for the Ukraine facility. It covers almost 70 areas of reforms. This includes structural reforms in the public sector, a number of economic reforms aimed at developing the business climate and entrepreneurship, and creating future growth point for our economy. First of all, in the energy, logistics, agriculture, critical raw materials, and IT sectors. The Ukraine facility plan has already been approved by the Ukrainian government. Today I hand it over to President Ursula von der Leyen. We expect it to be endorsed by a committee of EU member states in April. After that, we, after that the new funding instrument will finally enter into force. However, Ukraine urgently, however, Ukraine urgently needs the support of its partners right now. That is why Ukraine is extremely grateful to the European Commission and personally to Madam President for opening the so-called transitional financing, bridge financing. This is 6 billion euros, which we will receive in two tranches. The first tranche of 4.5 billion euros is expected today. We have received this. Thank you so much for this. And the second tranche of 1.5 billion euros will be received in April. So there is no pause in the support, and the Ukrainians will not be left without help, without support. Thank you for this. We also thank the European Commission for submitting to the European Council the negotiation negotiating framework for Ukraine's future membership in the EU. We expect that the member states will promptly consider and adopt it. Dear Ursula, dear journalists, let me once again thank the European Commission, all European institutions, and all EU member states for your continued solidarity. Together we will stand, together we will win, together we will build a better future. Ukraine and Europe are moving towards each other to be united and always to be together. Thank you so much for your attention, Your Ursula. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank and you. let me transfer you this Ukraine plan. So yeah. this, this is our plan, Ukraine book. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wait. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Let me take you.